So we'll go ahead and start today. Let's pull up the agenda. This will be um, a short or a shorter B3 implementation call. And I need to excuse um, Clay Mann and Laurel Bader. They are both uh, at a conference this week. So they send their well wishes and are sad that they can't be here with us today, but they are doing other important things and we appreciate them being able to support conferences. First up on the agenda is the public training that's coming up uh, next week. It's writing effective business rules. I'm gonna pull up the spring training cal calendar. This is available on the website as well and is on the Google group. The one for March is writing efficient business rules. Um, this is specific to software developers and state data managers. We have, will have the privilege of learning from Josh Legler, learning how to embed your state data set into schematron files for better data consistency. These trainings have been very beneficial. We've had great feedback. We'll give you an opportunity to learn some of that, um, some of those techniques, but also to be able to ask your questions. They generally last about an hour, um, and there's plenty of time in there for questions um, a question and answer. <coughs> so that is what's coming up on the training calendar for March. Any questions on that? Awesome. I'm going to stop sharing and let um, Josh take it over and he's got the next few items on the agenda. Okay, thanks Julianne. I'll share my screen in just a second. Um, the next agenda item we're actually not quite prepared to uh, present today. Uh, it was about um, effective dates for schematron files. Uh, the discussion in a previous V3 call was uh, to set some guidance around that for uh, states to follow as they put out updates to their state schematron files. And uh, you know, some guidance that would help them to communicate with uh, agencies and vendors regarding when they expect their updates to be deployed and to take effect and, and that kind of stuff. So uh, we need to do a, a little more internal prep on just uh, kind of putting together uh, a proposed. So it sounds like we're getting some uh, background noise. If you could all uh, check to make sure you're muted, that would be helpful. Uh, anyway, um, we'll put together a, a proposed uh, route um, or approach that we would recommend states to take and then present that on, an, on a future call to get your feedback. <clears throat> okay, so uh, two other topics uh, for me to cover today. One is uh, an update to the uh, Schematron rules, the national Schematron rules for version 3.4. Um, so we've talked about this several times. Uh, the draft rewrite of those rules is now available. So I'm gonna turn on my screen sharing here and uh, take you over back out here and get back to the Nemesis website. Okay. Uh, so I'm on the Schematron page of the Nemesis website and there's a new entry here at the top of the page <clears throat> with a link into the Git repository uh, for the Nemesis standard that contains um, a feature branch that includes these, uh, this rewrite of the V3.4 Schematron rules uh, at the national level. So if you follow that link, uh, you'll head into the Git repository. Uh, I will point out that this feature branch has not yet been merged into the 3.4.0 release branch yet. So this is a draft for review and these rules uh, should not be deployed in your systems yet. You should be uh, taking this opportunity to uh, test them out and uh, give us uh, feedback or report any issues that you find with them. Uh, I wanna start with the documentation. We have the usual change log and the change log has some brief notes about what we're changing in this particular rewrite. Uh, but because uh, it's kind of an architectural change that we did, we are adding a supplemental uh, file here, this uh, Schematron Changes 2020 Excel workbook that contains much more detail regarding all the individual changes to the architecture of the national Schematron files. So in that workbook, uh, we've listed the general uh, requirements that we were pursuing with this rewrite, uh, limiting asserts to national elements only. So we took out any asserts that uh, dealt with non-national elements 
uh, with a couple of exceptions, um, some structural rules about not values, pertinent negatives, and nils. Um, to reevaluate the fatal error or warning designations, uh, and some errors were turned down to warnings in this rewrite. To make asserts more atomic, so splitting up uh, an assert that maybe would have said that based on incident patient disposition, the following three elements should have been filled out. Now you'll get three assertions uh, listing uh, each, each assertion that failed would uh, list the one element that should have been filled out. To rephrase assert text um, so that uh, we put the element that probably needs to be addressed right up at the front of the sentence. So that's the first thing they see as they read it. And we had a goal of not making the rules more sensitive. So in other words, uh, if you run the new rules against um, a patient care report or a demographic file, uh, you will not get any new um, warnings or errors. Instead, you're getting a kind of a re-architecture of the existing warnings and errors. And uh, we also did not make them more specific, which means that uh, the only reason that you would see an error or warning go away in this rewrite is because it dealt with a non-national element and we removed it for that reason. So not uh, trying to make sure that we did not tweak really the logic within each um, thing that was being tested. The other two tabs of this workbook will give you all the details rule by rule. <coughs> um, excuse me. <coughs> so here's the one for demographic data set. You'll see uh, we've highlighted areas where changes were made. So um, you can compare the previous uh, uh, error level to the new level and see a few in this file that have been changed from error to warning. You can also see where the text of the assertion uh, has changed as well. I will note we do still have someone unmuted. If you can just double check, that would be appreciated. Getting a little bit of background noise. Uh, and over here, you'll have the old assert ID and the new assert ID uh, for cross comparison. And occasionally a few notes off to the side. Let me look at EMS data set, which is, uh, of course, the larger set of rules. Um, and I'll scroll down, for example, to, um, well, that. Yeah, let's get down to uh, uh, rules like this. Based on incident patient disposition, final patient acuity should be recorded. Um, or sorry, initial patient acuity. So the text is rewritten. Initial patient acuity shows up at the beginning of the sentence. Um, but it's also a real split out of the asserts. I'm going to go ahead and filter to this. Yeah, let me enable editing. Go ahead and filter to this assert ID here. Okay, so all of these used to be one assert in the old file, and now they are broken out into multiple asserts, each one of these being a separate assert in the new files. So again, testing the same constraints, but uh, re-architecting it uh, as was requested by stakeholders to split these out into their own asserts. Um, so this documentation will give you all those details where you can see, okay, here's this one assert that covered, you know, 20 some elements, probably 30 elements um, that has been broken out into 30 asserts now in the new files. Okay, the way that's going to show up, was there a question? The way that's going to show up for end users is something like this. Uh, under the old rules, they would have seen this kind of a message based on incident patient disposition. The following should be recorded and it would list out these three or, you know, up to 30 elements that they may have left blank on their call. It would list out the ones that they actually left blank on this call. Under the new uh, uh, rules, they will, three, they will see three warning messages and each warning message will uh, deal with that one element that they left blank. Uh, so if they left three elements blank, um, they'll see these three messages here instead of one message that lists the three elements. So again, the constraints themselves being the same, the overall v validation results being the same, but the architecture changing to present um, these results in a different way. Okay, so back here in uh, the Git repository, that was the documentation. You can get the rules themselves right here. 
Uh, of course, um, if you browse them through this interface, uh, then you can do the diff and you can see where the changes are um, in the rules. Uh, but what we would encourage you to do is to download these rules, these new rules, and um, <clears throat> run some of your existing data through these new rules and make sure that you're getting results that uh, are largely consistent with what you got from the old rules. Again, architecture will be different, the messages will be presented in a different format, but the overall results uh, should be the same. Um, so the more testing you can do on these, the better, and we wanna make sure that if there are any bugs in these files, that we find them now before they go into production. The schedule is, um, oh, I wanted to mention one other thing before I talk about the schedule. Um, in the sample data folder of the repository, there is a Schematron folder, and this contains uh, Schematron test cases, uh, a test case that demonstrates um, success or failure against each of the rules uh, in the Schematron files. Uh, these test cases have not been updated for the rewrite yet, and they will be in the next couple weeks. Um, however, they are still useful um, because like I said, the actual validation results are fairly consistent between the old rules and the new rules. So these could still be used uh, to test the new rules to make sure that you're getting results that are similar in validation. But those will be updated uh, before the final release. Okay, so the schedule is to uh, publish the final rules in mid-March, which means that uh, we need your feedback over the next two weeks or so. And uh, then the Nemesis TAC will deploy the updated uh, Schematron rules in the national database and in their compliance and validation web services uh, during the April 14th to 15th downtime window or maintenance window. And then we would uh, recommend that states deploy these updates next after the Nemesis TAC has deployed and then local agencies uh, finally deploy them after their state has deployed. Okay, so I covered a lot there. Again, the ask is to grab these new Schematron files and test them out uh, and make sure that we don't have any bugs in them before we uh, go final in March. Uh, but I want to pause here and see if there are any questions or comments on what I've covered. Are there updates to the Tableau dashboards based on this as well? Uh, like the... Um, uh, for example, the weekly data submission summary. Right, yes. Yes, there will be a, it will uh, impact those dashboards um, because of course there is a section, as you know, where you can look at which Schematron rules um, we're having the most issues uh, over the course of the period you're looking at and also which data elements were impacted. Um, so during the that time, you know, when the Nemesis TAC first deploys the change, there's probably going to be like one or two of those weekly summaries that's going to contain a mix of the old rules and the new rules. And so that's going to look a little funny for a couple of weeks. Uh, then after that, it's all going to be on the new rules. And um, I think you're actually going to see in, in that Tableau report, things are going to be a little cleaner in the end. Okay. Is I think it's trying to show like data element right now, and what ends up happening in the in the report is it says that you know every single one of your agencies has errors related to uh, e disposition twelve. I think because right. that's that's the trigger element, but you know we're much more interested in the flip side of that. You know which ones are they not filling out? Yeah, right. And I think we're going to see some, uh, the, the things are going to get a little cleaner there just because of how we annotated the rules. Okay. Are you still playing out the, the patterns or the, are you going to go to like the asserts? Uh, it is the asserts. Yes. And in okay. that Tableau report, it is at the assert level. Okay. Any other questions on the Schematron rewrite for 3.4? Okay, again, uh, take an opportunity to download those rules and run some data through them, do some testing, and let us know if you find any issues. Okay, the next topic that I have is uh, related to compliance testing web services. So let me uh, get onto the Nemesis website again.
the Nemesis TAC has developed uh, new web services for validation and compliance testing purposes. I'm going to uh, head to the web services page. Um, I will note uh, there's still a, a link here to the old uh, validator uh, web service, so uh, that'll go away. Uh, but there's a section here called web services that has uh, two new links in it, the new validator and the new compliance testing web service. Uh, both of these new web services uh, will support uh, both Nemesis 3.4 and Nemesis 3.5 uh, through the same service. The validator web service is useful uh, during your development phase. Um, you should, of course, be validating data in your own system prior to sending it to someone else. And uh, receive and process systems should be validating data on the way in. Uh, but this, this validator web service can be helpful for comparing and making sure that the results you're getting from your own software are consistent with uh, this reference standard. So you can use the validator web service to send some data, uh, get validation results, and compare them to what you've got. Again, it sounds like someone's unmuted. Please do check your uh, mics. Uh, the compliance testing web service uh, is almost identical to the validator web service, but it differs in two ways. One is that it will save the data that you submit to it. So if you need someone at the Nemesis TAC to actually review something that you've been uh, going over, trying to validate it, wondering why it's not working or why it's different than you thought, if you submit it to the compliance testing web service, then someone at the Nemesis TAC can actually go grab what it was that you submitted and, uh, and check out you know, and give you some technical assistance. Uh, the second difference is that the compliance web service will uh, give you a request handle in return, and you can then use the uh, retrieve status call to uh, um, get the validation results of the data that you submitted. The validator web service does not give you a request handle, so you can't follow up with a, uh, um, you just get immediate validation results for that transaction, and then you're done. You can't follow up with a retrieve status later. Uh, so those two new web services are available, um, again, supporting both 3.4 and 3.5. The compliance testing automation service, which you use as you go into active testing, uh, will be available shortly. All the development has been completed on that, so we're just awaiting production deployment. Uh, so guessing in the next week or so, that'll be available. Uh, at that time, the um, compliance, let me get over to compliance here. Uh, the web service, there's the compliance testing web service listed there as well. And the compliance uh, guide will be uh, updated to add in the uh, URLs for, um, for the compliance testing automation service as soon as that uh, update has been deployed. So it looks like within the next uh, week or so, um, any, any vendor that is ready for active testing on 3.5 should be able to uh, begin that process with the Nemesis TAC. Any questions on the new uh, compliance or validator web services? All right, okay, so I think that takes care of it from my end, Julianne, I'll send it back to you. All right, thank you, Josh. Are there any questions for Josh? Okay, so on items for the Office of EMS, Eric is attending the conference this week as well. So we will um, put those forward to the next call. Any issues from vendors or states or other stakeholders that you would like to bring up at this time? is a great opportunity. So our next meetings, um, our V3 implementation call meetings are on the second and fourth Wednesdays. So our next one coming up is March 11th, same time, same place. 9.22 for mountain time at least. This was quite a short meeting, uh, but very valuable. We appreciate Josh being able to explain some of those changes to us.
please feel free to reach out with any questions or concerns that you have, or if there's any way that the Technical Assistance Center can be of service or help you with your um, data collection or implementation. Thank you so much, everyone. We appreciate you taking time out of your busy day today and hope that you have a fantastic day. There's one more chat. Okay, Bridget sent one last final chat. Just to make sure if, you, if you're just on the phone call and you're not able to update your phone number, please send Bridget an email um, if you need to have your participation recorded. All right, thank you everyone and have a fantastic day.